Welcome everyone to this week's Force Friday. Uh, very exciting subject. We're gonna talk about force and animation. Uh, some of you may not know this, but this is actually uh, where I really started to learn about the concept of force uh, because I was a former uh, Disney animation artist myself um, in the early nineties, way back um, while Lion King was in production. And uh, it really uh, is one of the, the main concepts, one of the support structures for everything that I teach and I believe in. Uh, it comes from the world of animation, specifically Disney animation, but we're gonna look at other types of animation today as well. We're gonna look at anime and we're gonna look at stop motion. We're gonna look at 2D and 3D. Um, and I just want you to be aware uh, you know, one of, the, one of the questions we get asked very often at drawingforce.com is like, all right, well, this is great. You guys are teaching us how to draw a force and these figure drawings. And some people just think we teach gesture drawing, but it's way more than that. Uh, and, you know, where does it go from there? Right. So we're going to over the next probably month, month and a half, start sharing with you the different uh, the different uh, extensions of force and where does it go? And what kind of careers can come out of that? So here's our first one, the really big one for me, where it all started, animation, right? So with that, uh, let's say hi to the gang. How's it going, guys? It's going good. How are you? Good. Look at how much hair you have on your head. <laughs> I think you have, you, have, you have more hair than Swenley does at this point. Yeah, and you're catching up uh, to me. I got to go get a haircut, and you'll bypass me pretty fast. <laughs> the powerful hair oil. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, um, you know, I would imagine you guys are fans of animation to some degree. I know Swanley and I, we've talked about anime, that you like watching anime. So it's kind of cool that we'll be representing that today. How about you, Mertunje? Is there any animation in particular, you in particular that you like or any particular movie that stands out to you or? Um, it's it's like an irony, but you know, to, in, with to today's cover, it's a beast. <laughs> I really, beast. you know, yeah. yeah, I really love it, you know. And uh, yeah. I think that's uh, that uh, age of the Disney is called the Renaissance of Disney. I don't know. I've heard of it somewhere, and I do believe that it yeah. it has. So I really like Beauty and the Beast, uh, Tarzan. Yeah, again, one of the <laughs> great movies. A lot of yeah. Glenn stuff, basically. A lot of Glenn stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. That. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I hate to sound grandiose, but you could say that Glenn Keane was the Michelangelo of the Renaissance of Disney animation. Yeah, and you got yeah. other guys there, just to credit you. I mean, there's people like Andreas Deja and Mark Henn and, you know, a bunch of those other guys. And those were the Raphaels and the Berninis. I got this whole group of guys and, you know, and the nine old men that obviously helped that younger generation learn, you know, how to create this new Renaissance, to your point, you know. So, um all right, let's get to it. We have a lot of stuff to cover today, so I'm just going to jump in. Uh, we're not going to actually be in Photoshop. Um, I'm going to share with you, the audience, uh, something called Sync Sketch that a student of mine showed me uh, a long time ago, uh, and I use it when I'm teaching now. Uh, tell me if you guys can see it. Do you guys see this? Yes. Okay, great. So... Let me go full screen here. So Sync Sketch, for those of you that are interested in animation, uh, Sync Sketch is actually a great um, tool for commenting. So for teaching, it's great because students basically, if they're learning how to storyboard or if they are uh, doing animation, you can bring stuff in here in video in a timeline. It's free, okay, uh, to be able to do this. And if I draw or write comments within a frame, it remembers it, right? Where in Photoshop, you have to actually like move the layer over to that position in time, right? Which kind of becomes a little bit of a hassle. Here, it actually remembers it from frame to frame. So those of you that are interested, this is an amazing tool to, you know, bring your work in and edit in here. You could animate in here, quite honestly, because it's, it's understanding from frame to frame. So really awesome software, sync, syncsketch.com. You could see it in the URL up there. Uh, so what we're gonna do here, is uh, before I get started, I'll draw here really quickly on the side. Um, and grab colors here too. You know, force, as you all know, hopefully at this point, you know, we talk about directional forces in blue, right? And we talk about applied forces in orange, right? And it's the relationship of these two that is 
quintessential to understanding force. Now these directional forces, they're moving us through the body and there's applied force. It's always pushing against it. And to me, applied force is like energy in the body that's driving the um, contours of the figure and those directionals are what create rhythm, right? So here, this is um, a very um, iconic uh, Glenn Keane animated scene, which is uh, the beast um, transforming from a beast into a human. Massive spoiler alert here if you haven't seen this movie yet. <laughs> right? um, and these are, uh, these are the pencils, right? Mutunjay was asking about this particular phase before we came on. And you know, this is 2D production, right? So we're going back to the uh, early 90s. This was done around 91 or so. I was in college when this film came out. And, uh, you know, what we're seeing here, you know, let me shut the sound off on this. Um, what we're seeing here is the beast change and you're seeing a mixture of clean up animation, visual effects, right, are being drawn in here. Uh, you'll see on Belle's face, for instance, there's little triangles on her cheeks. This is when they were starting to use um, computers to color animation. It was the very beginning of this at Disney. You'll see these triangles. That's because they dropped color on her cheek, that like a you know a reddish color and with a bleated edge, right? So, but you know, special effects has to an actually animate and map that triangular shape to her face. Right, from drawing to drawing to drawing to drawing to drawing, right? Nowadays, obviously, we're more sophisticated than that with 3D animation. So let's just get, let's get in here a little bit. I'm gonna push in here. It's a little tough to see, it's a little dark, my apologies, but I want you to see, um, I'm gonna draw on top of this and show you that uh, there's force going on here right now, basically into Beast's uh, shoulder right here. So there's all this applied force, I should say, that's pushing in here, right? And you're gonna see it all of a sudden start pushing its way along the contour to over here, right? So I'm gonna go like this. You'll see his head moves. There's that shoulder pushing up, right? And then you can see in the white, right? That it starts moving itself to the right. One of the things we talk about at drawingforce.com is um, this idea of a force blob. And he is, he's kind of like an animated force blob right now, right? Because he kind of looks like this, right? And it's all like starting to like push up this way and then push its way over there, right? So all of a sudden we have this going on here. I have to tell you guys, I'm, I'm very excited even just sitting here doing this for you because it makes me aware of how important I think it is that you understand that Force's birth came from animation. And one of the trickiest things I think for the three instructors, including myself, to teach you guys is if you don't have an animation background, not that you have to have one, but if you don't have one, you know, to understand that it comes from this concept of things moving, right? That's a big secret to what I teach is my animation background. And, and I had to teach Matunjay and Swenley that as well, right? To understand like things are going in a direction, right? And if you can get that into your mind, into your figure drawing, it makes a massive, massive change instead of you just thinking the body is a stagnant idea. So here Beast is starting to push his way this way, right? Let me just keep scrubbing through here. And now his arm explodes out. So in order for that arm to explode out, you know, we're pushing up this way and we have a directional force like this. And directional force, the curve of that directional force gets more and more strongly affected by how much applied force is on it, right? So if you have a really strong, whoops, if you have a really strong, um, if you have a weak directional, it'll look like this with, you know, weak applied and a strong applied will affect the directional by making it have more of an arc. So it's pretty strong what's going on in the arm here, right? You can see, I'll try to trace this out a little bit. This is what's great about Sync Sketch. See, I can do this very quickly for you guys. But now it's like starting to show up here more at the wrist. Why is that? Because we're going this way, right? So let's go back to that, right? And now from an applied force standpoint, the elbow is like the leading edge in this, in a sense of this moment. 
and it starts crawling its way up, you know, up to the wrist. You see that? So it can change, right? The apex can basically slide around the perimeter of the edge of something based on where all the force, the applied force is mostly pushing out, you see? So again, what's great about sync sketch is look, now we can actually watch this. I could frame through this, you know, and you can see uh, it's slipping its way up to the wrist. So believe it or not, that's how we see the human body, <laughs> right? Is like understanding the exact slippage of the applied force and where it is, where's its apex and how is it moving around, right? So here's a hand, right? Which also has um, applied force in it, believe it or not, right? So here, I'm just backing up here. Right now, you know, it's, it's just making its way upward, right? But right here starts to become the leading edge of all of this. So right here, keeps getting pushed up into, you see that? And it's because like all this force is coming from underneath, right? It's coming from the forearm, right? So the forearm is like driving up into that, right? And what's happening in between that, you know, from the forearm um, up into that moment in the hand is from down here is where we're getting all this applied force, right? To push its way uh, up into that moment in the hand, you see? So even so as something as small as the hand still has directional and applied uh, forces, right? So if I scrub through this very quickly now, you see the hand starts down here and Glenn had to have had the thought of thrusting the palm upward, right? Cause that is its direction, that's where it's going. And you can see that show up in the animation, right? Like this foot, Let's, let's go over this foot real quick here. So the foot's going like this. And there's an interesting change that happens here. So right now it's kind of like, you know, going this way, right? And then it starts to change. Now the shift is gonna be here. Right here, look at what starts to happen. It's going to push forward into the balls of the feet there. You see that? Really cool. There's a shift that occurs there. You see? So if we go back, Whoops, over here, let's look at applied force inside of this. All right, let's grab orange. So applied force is coming in this way. It's going up, up into the blue curve. And I'd say it's starting to make its way down here now. You know, these toes are going up, but we're starting to prep for the, uh, so this is going up, but we're starting to prep over here, All right? This is going up, we're prepping into here. And now it's really starting to take shape here. See, so imagine when you're drawing the figure, you can imagine things in motion. Every part of the body has a direction in space and it feels like it's actually going somewhere, right? That would dramatically change your drawing and your experience to, to drawing, right? But here, I'll scrub this now. All right, so here it is, right? Here's this foot. You can see where it's going and then the applied force starts pushing down into the ball of the foot, right? Amazing, right? Think about, again, that Glenn had to think about how he's going to have this come up, sweep up, and then push the ball of the foot, right, down towards the camera. And in three-dimensional space, right? Draw this all out. Let's remember, it's all hand-drawn. There is no 3D here, right? How's, uh, 
how's our chat going? Any questions? We're not talking about the, the classics and, you know, it's all great. Cool. All right, last, last segment on here, and then I'm gonna move on to another clip. Uh, check this out, right? Like, look how awesome this is. You can see the preparation that's going on right here, all right? See that? Beautifully done. And now it's starting to shift its way over here towards the face. So notice this orange line I'm drawing, it's not one that you see, right? Not clearly. It's the thing that the blue line responds to, but you have to be aware of it in order to do the drawing, right? Kind of weird, right? So look, here's all of this applied force. Let's get the directional one in there, which is the drawing. It would actually be, you know, the, the line of beast's shoulder here, right? So you can see this is all, this is where the applied force is shown. You see? Notice the shape of the curve, right? It's pushing into it. I'm gonna try to do a ton of frames here just really fast. So we could step through it. It shifts there, by the way, you notice that? Most of the time here has been curving this way and then Glenn switched it. It kind of straightens out for a moment and then the curve starts going this way. Kind of, it's pretty cool. And that shift of bending this way allows the head to come up and around like this. So we've got this bigger force moving this way. You see, now we're here, All right? And now this kind of dies off and we start pushing this over here. And you could animate like this, by the way. You don't, you know, let's say you're doing a character, you start off with the abstraction of forces. You just look at straight and curved lines moving around. You can see I could animate something if I wanted to this quickly and just like get this done. And I wouldn't even do this because I would have keys. I wouldn't do like every drawing, right? I would key it out, time it out, right? This starts moving here now. Because that's where the direction is, right? So here we go, right? Let's take a look at this. There it is. So you now you can watch it. And boom, it switches to the face, comes forward and then pushes down into the bottom. You see? That's what we want you to try to pull off in your drawing. And this is one reason we teach force drawing is if you want to be an animator, it doesn't matter if you're 2D or 3D, like there is no better approach to drawing than force drawing. I could promise you that. That I could say 100% hands down for full confidence. If you want to learn how to animate, force drawing is a way to do it because for A, I'm an animator and I've taught force from this abstraction of understanding how things move. We're pushing in directions. Animation is about the abstraction of physics. You know, the best animators know how to make characters move relative to gravity and motion and direction and performance and acting and everything else come out of that, you see? So that's the first one. Um, well, I can zoom in and out too. Uh, let's take a look at another one, right? Uh, let's see, let's go to this one. Let's go to 3D Disney. Close this window. Okay. Okay, Tangled. Can you guys see Tangled? Yes. Okay. So this one I did for, um, it's called frame by frame uh, animation there on Instagram. It's an awesome um, 
an awesome account. The guys there are great. Uh, they invited me to their animation community online. Uh, and I did a, an hour, an hour and a half talk about this segment we're going to look at. I'm not going to take that time today, obviously, to, to do that. But I'm going to give you a quick rundown of this just to show you how all the 2D stuff that Glenn was doing at Disney now translates over to 3D animation. And 3D animation is not what it was when Toy Story came out. Right now, 3D animation has the capacity to be morphed and manipulated almost to the same degree as 2D drawings, which I have to say is quite amazing in just the, what, couple of decades that it's pretty much as like good as 2D. It's a different experience, of course, of creating it, right? You're not drawing. Although I have to say, I still think a lot of animators want to learn how to draw well enough to thumbnail the stuff out or even do a rough pass of animation and key stuff out to help them understand how they can push uh, the 3D work, right? You can, you can think faster, right? Drawing again is a language. It can become an end, like we saw in the 2D stuff, but it's this language, right? You're trying to communicate ideas and here we're trying to communicate physics and uh, motion. And you know, here's this amazing scene um, from Tangled uh, with all this fantastic, let me shut the audio off again. All this fantastic like uh, applied forces and directional forces. I mean, look at just this beginning here, right? Right, so here we have these two characters. There's a standoff. They look at each other. They're trying to get to this object. I think it's a bag or a satchel at the end of this branch at the edge of this cliff. So Flynn starts moving, right? And there are things, I don't want to get into like, you know, um, uh, what's the word I wanted to, anticipation, right? Like all the different terms in animation. I want to just show you today how there's directional and applied forces and all this stuff. So he sets up, right? He anticipates, he comes up, he goes up to get ready to push down basically, right? So that means, he is the applied force on the horse, right? On the poor horse's head, right? Look at all of this. Let's see if I can do this as fast as I did before. All right, so we've got this horse's head and, and he's doing it, right? He is the applied force, ironically. So an applied force can be a character, right? He creates it. The horse's head would be drawn like this. See, look at how much curve is in it and how far it starts stretching. Look at the drag in the lip. That's awesome. That's a damn good animator right there. Right? He's dragging everything. Look at the shape of the eyes. Look at the ears. You see, this animator is aware. Applied force is that way. The head's like this. Everything is going to drag off of that edge, you see? So it's all getting pushed this way, all right? See what I mean? So, and then what does he do? He pushes off of that. Pretty amazing, right? All of a sudden he's like, great, I got you out of the way. Now he uses that to push him this way. So Flynn got a twofer, <laughs> right? He like pushed off the horse and that helped him get the horse out of the way and propel him, you know, towards the satchel, right? Now, all of a sudden that force switches gears here. It starts making its way here. All right, so let's go back in blue here real quick. So here he is, right here is his directional. I'm using his torso and his shoulder, by the way. And then right about here, it starts working its way down. You see that? And then it's off camera. So let's go back and look at that, this whole little scene. All right, we got standoff. All right, and then he becomes, he's preparing, right? It's called anticipation. So he's anticipating, he's prepping, he's building his energy up by going upward in the opposite direction that he's finally gonna go in, you see? And then he pushes down. So if I were to draw the force in this position, the leading edge here would be that side of his face, right? Because of all of Flynn's action pushing down into it. And I would be dragging everything off of it, right? It's almost like a comet. And that's the tail is the ears, the lip, right? The eyeballs. 
and everything's pushing down in that direction. And Flynn reverses that pushes off, right? And look at that applied force pushing into the shoulder and then that pushes down into his chest and he goes off camera. Look at the horse here and then I'll stop and we'll go to another scene. Um, the horse here goes into an anticipation. See, he goes down right there and then he starts going up. So let's start with directional force on this one. He's coming up like this and he's going into here. You see that? Really beautiful. Look at this rhythm that this uh, animator put in here. Fantastic. I think it's good to mention like that to notice like there's some like elasticity to the forms, like things squash and stretch, you know, things compress and elongate. So that's also that you can something that you can also bring to the figure to make it more alive. You know, it doesn't have to be stiff. Yeah, I think that's a great note. And you know, that's why force starts typically with curves, not straight lines. Not that straight lines aren't important, but curves show applied force, right? Because you're you're pushing into it. And that applied force makes things bend. Straight lines are more rigid, you know. There's some schools of thought out there that primarily draw the figure with straight lines. Well, you're not going to get force and rhythm out of that. I, I can promise you that. It's not going to happen. So first we start with understanding the curves. And then later you learn how to bring the straight lines back in, which leads to good design, you see? So look, I mean, everything I've drawn today is pretty much curves, right? Just to different varying degrees, right? So look, there's Flynn, here's the horse. He pushes up, he cranes his head, beautiful rhythm in the body, right? He comes up, he sets himself up. That's in a way in anticipation for the next move, which now is his face coming forward, right? And he's like, he's on the race with Flynn, you see? So hopefully this makes sense. I hope you guys have as much fun as I am. I love doing this. <laughs> you can do this all day, just analyze animation. Uh, let's see, any questions from the audience? Uh, let's see, and take a look at the legend. It's amazing that we're able to make it. So yeah, it is amazing that it can be so darn organic, right? I agree. Amazing that 3D is so darn organic. Okay, so we've taken care of Tangled. Let's see, uh, I'm gonna go to the next one. Let's go to, to this guy. Okay, can everyone see this? Yeah. All right, so this is Kubo, this is Leica. I wanted to show you guys that this also exists in stop motion, right? A good stop motion animator is going to be able to pull off still the same thing. Interesting, right? Because the dolls, right? The armatures, they're not as flexible as a drawing. And they're also not as flexible as current 3D animation is. Um, but if you can get the posing right, uh, you could still get good force in here. And then the force will help also inform the timing of the frames, right? So I'm not as acclimated. I'm not accustomed to this shot, so I have to kind of go through this one with you and scrub it and let's see what we have. And then we'll start picking out moments, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of run through this. Let's see what we're looking at here. All right, so we got the witch is pulling the monkey, the baboon up into the sky here. Okay, and there's this, that's a great moment, right? Look at that. Oh, like pent up force, right? Look at the curve of the monkey, the spring of his body. Notice that the witch is straight and then she bends, right? Because he's pushing in. So he here is applied force and she is her direction. Whoops. Her direction has changed, right? So she's like this because of that applied. You know, we go frame back. Notice she's in the other direction. So good on the animator here because he was able to reverse the C torso here, right? Because the curve went like that to that. And that makes this more dramatic. You see, if she were already standing in that kind of curve, then you would have lost the contrast of drama of moving um, over to this type of curve, right? Where we're bending to the right. Let's see what happens here, right? Her curve gets stronger and stronger and stronger, right? So she's off camera. Let's go back and look at Mr. Monkey here, Mr. Baboon. 
let's go back here. Nice effects, right? Lighting's beautiful. So he's getting ready here, right? He's like this. So he's already like preparing to go that way. You see that? Wants to go that way. Because you can see the directional force is all pent up to do that. It's like a giant arrow, <laughs> right? It's got shot out of a gun. Here again, we can see gun. the we can see the squash and stretch. Like like here, it she's like yeah, uh, it's like a ball. Yeah, then it's more like an arrow. Yeah, so we could do this, right? We could even go that far if we wanted. Well, it's very difficult to do it in a stop motion. Right? Yes, more difficult, most definitely. To Swenley's point, right? Look at, look at the if if it was a ball, the baboon. Look at the shape of the ball now. All right. So let's go back. You can see how he's getting tighter and tighter in there until he's like this basically. So here it is, right? Let's like, let's go frame by frame through it. So here we are. Pent up, pent up, pent up, right? And that force is getting ready out the back and boom, right? All of a sudden she's pushing out the back. He's pushing out, you know, going right and left basically, which is also clear staging, right? To the credit of who designed this shot, they were mostly to the right, right? Because we wanted to see the extent of the baboon's body open up, right? And we still have enough space on the right to see the witch bend, right? And go off camera. Because most of the action's on the left. You can see the baboon traveled further than she did, which is how hard he kicked off, right? Really cool, really, really cool. Let's see what happens next here. She falls on the deck of this boat. So here, talking about squash and stretch, right? He's all stretched out. Now we see the reverse. So stretch into the squash on the boat. Slides back. Pretty intense. <laughs> intense, dark battle. I'm going to kind of move along here. Let's go a little faster. So here they fight again in the air, see what happens. This feels actually very anime to me, right? And the way that they're fighting and they're up in the air, feels like an anime, people are floating around all over the place fighting, you know, in the sky. It has a very anime feel to it. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they looked at anime because anime is great at composing action scenes, you know, and these fight scenes, right? What a great pose. Let's go back on this here for a second. I love the baboon's pose. All right, it's great force shape. Straight to curve right there. You see that? Head's here, it's looking that way, All right? Here's the leg, here's the arm, the hand, right? It's force shape, basically. Here's the other one. Very Mike Mignola-esque. So he's moving back, right? What we notice is this. It's going that way. Let's see how that plays out. Ah, interesting jump in panels and frames there. Notice that to that, right? So the force stays on this edge. Let's see if he reverses it. Kind of gets to this place where everything kind of almost straightens out, slight curve on the back. All right, we cut. Curious to see the next shot of the baboon, if he reverses his action or not. So when you're animating, nope. So he's here, he goes up from straight and comes back down. 
right? He's pushing in here now. So that's that's his anticipation, right? He's dropping down. I'll grab orange here. Someone saying in the chat that the baboon is also a sheep. A sh oh, you're right. I think it's uh well, spoiler alert again, I think it's the main character or a different character that's uh, human, right? Human-ish. Yeah, I think I remember that. I haven't seen this movie in a long time. Yes, thank you. It is a she. So notice how it goes down to prepare for all this energy of going up, right? And then it seems like it opens up this way. <laughs> the reason I'm laughing is when I think of stop motion animation, and maybe this is my own mistake, you know, I typically think of kids' films, but the like of films, they are pretty damn mature, <laughs> I have to say. This is pretty intense. It's very dark. The lighting is very stark, right? It's a very creepy, creepy scene. It's well done. I have to say the, the skill level, the craftsmanship in these movies is amazing. Just amazing. All right, so how are we doing on time? We're doing okay. Any questions? No, I think everybody loves it, loving it. Okay, good. So, you know, my point here is I just want you to see how force works in animation. So we looked at Glenn Keane's Beast. We looked at a uh, you know, 3D animation uh, from Tangled. And here's Kubo by Leica, stop motion animation. And still, you know, what we're dealing with is force, right? Directional and applied forces. Those directional and applied forces define silhouette and shape, right? And you're playing with how those shapes are gonna create motion, right? So that's what's going on here. And Leica did an amazing job of that with these two characters, right? Really, really well done. Very well done. Yeah, if you haven't seen this film, you gotta go check it out. There's some, again, the, the artistry is just fantastic. Just fantastic. Okay, let's go on to our last, um, let's go on to our last piece. Uh, we're gonna go to this. Okay. Can you guys see Castlevania? Yeah. Okay. So here's our last one for today. Um, I get asked this, I have conversations about anime quite a bit because obviously anime has a huge audience, right? Huge, huge audience. Uh, it might even be bigger than, than uh, American animation. I mean, it's, it's gigantic, right? Uh, and, you know, with do cause, I, I, I think what's, my favorite thing about anime is that you have adult themed animation, right? Where most of the animation done in the US is uh, children or family uh, focused, right? That's the demographic, right? And now you guys know what demographics are because we talked about that in our business um, video, right? So I don't know this clip. Uh, so again, I'm gonna kind of scrub through here a little bit and let's take a look at what's happening here. Now, Personally, I'm going to create a lot of lovers and haters of myself here. <laughs> but personally, I think anime's strength, like I said, is adult themed stories. And, and, you know, in fact, I just watched the thing on Netflix called Godzilla and like, uh, it was Godzilla and something point, final point, stand point, something like that. Uh, very intelligent, like storyline, a very mature storyline, very in-depth. Um, but anime, I think where anime's weakness lies is um, acting. I think acting is done more on a TV level. So what do I mean by that? Typically, the acting will be like close-up shots of somebody's face, and then it's like sticker animation. What I mean by sticker is the head won't move, but you'll switch out um, eye frames and mouth frames, you know, for some quick acting. It's cheaper, right, than getting like a whole face to squash and stretch and um, an emote, right? 
So to me, the acting's not really where it's at. To me, anime is cool because A, there's a lot of action, there's adult themes. Uh, they, you know, the Japanese, they're amazing at visual effects, just amazing. They almost put, I think, more time into the vi visual effects and the physics of visual effects. And last but not least, the action scenes are over the top, right? Just like the sense of camera move, depth, you know, depth within the shot, lots of small to big elements that give you super high drama. It's what we don't get in the American animation, right? So it's kind of interesting that you have one culture that's great at certain things and the other one's great at other. It's really hard to find the position of both. You know, in American, they get some action stuff going, but the films are usually not that mature. Like it kind of crosses out a little bit. Um, and man, if anime would just put as much time into the acting and the emotion as they do into all the other stuff, damn, that would be like the ultimate force of animation, I think, on the planet Earth, you know? So let's take a look at this. I don't know this scene. I'm going to look at it. Let's study it. I'm really curious to see how good the directional and applied forces are, if they make sense. Sometimes what I'll catch in here too with anime is, and the physics isn't totally right. The timing is cool and things moving around at unique timing, but all of a sudden the, the directional and applied force relative to physics is a little awkward, right? So let's see, this one might be amazing. I have no idea. So I don't wanna prejudge it, but let's take a look. So two characters flying in the air. That always causes a challenge anyway, just like we had with the Kubo, because physics is a little different, right? You can sheet it a little bit, right? So let's see what's going on. We've got two flying characters are floating around. Got a lot of fighting in the sky. Shards of ice, it looks like, are being thrown at this guy. How many of you guys have seen this? How I know Castlevania is on Netflix is pretty big, right? I'd like to hear from you guys. And what are the notes here? Just re-watched this last week. So Daniel, of course, has watched it. Hey, Richard. Richard's like, hey, nice to see you. I've been doing a lot of work at Drawing Force. Takes a little time. Yeah, Richard's been kicking butt lately, I have to say. Um, force is drawing it for a month, two months. I see. So just a lot of Force conversation. Fair enough. Ghibli films are another level. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to talk about Ghibli today, um, but Ghibli is another level. I think very strong story. Um, a little bit more emotional than I would say some of the other ones are. I don't want to get this wrong, but I want to say it's Studio Trigger uh, that's in Japan that pushes a lot of these like over top action sequences. And I forget the name of this, but there's a name of animators that are sort of at the top of their game that do a lot of these action scenes. And it starts with the letter S and uh, I don't want to botch it up. So I can't remember what it is. If anyone remembers, please uh, type it in there or if you know it. You mean Sakura? Yes, Sakura, right? Yes. They're like, am I, is my definition correct? Sakura, yeah, I think it's Sakura. these shots which have a lot of action, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and there's like this elite team, right? The elite animation team <laughs> that takes these on. It's kind of interesting. It's interesting that it's broken down like that, like, you know, that they're aware of it. So Swenley, this came from Swenley and I asked him for an anime. Is there anything in particular here you think that I should look at? Did you have anything planned here? Uh, I think more towards the end of the clip. It's very okay. close to you. Let's look. All right, let's see what's happening. Is it past this? Yes, a bit more. Oh, things get interesting. <laughs> is he supposed to be Satan or is he just some kind of vampire demon guy? Yeah, he's a vampire. Okay. So we can even very simply look at this. It's got the basics of some force in it, right? Like he lands on the ground, right? So he's pushing downward, right? It's a compression. This is an anticipation. 
Anticipation for what? Anticipation for this. Right? And boom, right? Just this is, and this is how the anime guys create high drama because look at the distance he covered in one frame. It's absurdly fast. Distance, from, you know, between one drawing to another is what causes speed and timing and animation, right? So, you know, here, the directional force, right, is here. It's down there. The orange is applied, right, because we're pushing down. And now it's going to start moving into his, uh, into his shoulder right there, right? And boom, he's gone, right? That's how fast that just happened. So very dramatic, right? Very, very dramatic. Comes in. He lands, he compresses, camera's turning too. Man, a lot of stuff going on. Camera's rotating. It looks like it was done in 3D, the camera. And they're like mapping the 2D to the 3D. And then he all of a sudden shoots off, right? Yeah, big jumps in movement create this like crazy... The, in anime, they do a lot of like things hold and there's lots of in-betweens and then boom, big jumps in frames for extreme high speed. Look at the change in frame from that to that. Now, look though, I have to say just on the opposite side, look at staying on model, right? Look at this face and then look at this face. I'm like, who is that? <laughs> now you probably never see it admittedly, <laughs> right? Because it's so fast but it doesn't really look that much like the same character anymore, right? Look at that. It doesn't look like the character from the first two drawings. <laughs> it's got the hair. We know there's an eyeball, a mouth and everything there, right? So, you know, and you're not probably even looking at that because there's two giant glowing red spheres, orange spheres here. You're gonna, st you're gonna pay attention to that, right? Just kind of curious to see where this goes. So some action happening here with applied force. We're starting to um, push up, right? Which is cool, right? Pushing up from the power of the sphere itself. So that started pushing up there. Her face comes down into the shot. Now she's shooting, right? So how would I push this, right? If I were to push this pose, notice the angularity. Right. Notice that this is like this and this is like this and this is like this and this is like this. Right. So very, very straight. I would have preferred. Right. If, if I had drawn this, I would have said, you know what, maybe I keep this here and I keep the stiffness of that. But I want to lean her into the ball. Right. Come off the back into the shoulder like that. And then change up the leg, maybe you get it more of an angle into it because it creates more drama, right? And then this one would be behind her because she's trying to stabilize her body, right? Against all the push. You see what I mean? So here we have more, more pushing like that, right? Let's see what happens. Is this what you were talking about or is there something else that you really want me to get to so before we run out of time? No, this was it, the final scene. Okay. Ah, okay, here's a fight moment. Let's see what happens. Doesn't look too good for our vampire. <laughs> so see, this is where anime guys are amazing, right? It's like, look at this shot. It's a back, uh, back shot. Lots of, lots of glow, visual effects, boom sword magic explosion you could barely make out the silhouette of the guy in there and then he's already at the vampire in a pose right and then the swirl of magic it's as if it followed him in right it's like swirling around him yeah it's like i said lots of force but not so much in the characters as it is the effects. The effects have this like all this swirling and action going on. They're in a pose, you know? And again, this is an easy pose to push the drama on because this guy is getting hit, right? He's getting hit in the stomach by the sword. So he would get pushed that way. I would just take this guy and I would say, you know what, bend him, right? Bend him like that, get his head over here, 
push his body like that, right? Maybe get this leg to come out towards us more in perspective, right? Like push the drama of that. This guy could easily either push into the cut more. So push his body that way. Yeah, I'd probably push him into the, into the sweep, right? This is cool. I like his leg back there. I would push him in, right? It gives him more power. Uh, let me grab orange here. It gives him more power in the push, right, of the sword, which then shows up here. You see? Let's see where this goes, though. So it looks like we need a close up of the sword <laughs> against the guy's skin. And it looks like it's barely doing anything to him. That's not good. <laughs> he needs more applied force on the sword. Exactly. He's like barely tapping him. <laughs> Doesn't look like he's too happy about it, though. Right? He's still pushing. Yeah, so what's interesting here, let's see if I can just play this out. Let's watch. Usually it has to go through the whole thing. Here we go. So we got jumping around. He hits the wall. Camera move. I guess she turns into, uh, yeah, I guess. So here's this ghostly apparition flying around. Lots of movement there. Lots of good force, I would say, in the apparition. Turns the character into ice. Shows up behind her. Electrocutes her. God, camera is crazy. So sophisticated. Nice shot there. Let's take a look at that really quick. Let's see if I can find that. So not to advertise Sync Sketch, but Sync Sketch pretty awesome. Like I said, if you're into learning, even if you just want to learn for yourself, you know, you can come in here and do what I did today, grab some animation sequences that you really like and go in there and see what the directional and applied forces are doing. Right. And then try to bring that thinking over to your figure drawing. And again, the main thing I'm trying to make you guys aware of here today is this is one use of force in the world of a professional career. What we are teaching you does translate. Our goal is sure we want you to learn how to draw force and figures. Most of you are not there just to go, hey, I want to be great at figure drawing. It's a stepping stone, right, to something else. And here it is for animation, right? I lost track of that guy. Let's keep playing this out. We'll watch movies together. Slow-mo on the turn. Let's keep going. So obviously this guy is at a standoff and there's like three or four of them. He has no problem <laughs> taking them on. It is interesting. What, I, what I'm noticing today is there's a lot of timing and a lot of movement, but the bodies don't bend very much. There's kind of a stiffness in the posing. And I, I wonder if that comes from martial arts, you know, especially the prevalence of it in Japan, you know, to hit like poses with that kind of straightness to it, that stiffness to it, right? The strength of it. Um, and then the power here is coming from timing. Uh, yeah, definitely from timing and, um, and the camera, right? And then you got the visual effects sitting on top of that. I just want to bend these bodies a little bit more and I'd be happy. So any questions? We only have a few minutes left. I hope you guys have enjoyed so far today. Um, I want you to, like I said, to be aware of just how much um, you know, force is uh, in animation, right? Let's see. Uh, Daniel says, I feel part of the anime appeal is that it's a bit 
clumsy sometimes. It feels as if anyone can do it. Interesting, as opposed to Disney or Marvel. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. I, I do agree with you. I think there's kind of a uh, a sort of lower threshold to entry. It feels like some talented, and this is no insult because it could come across as one, but it sound, it's like almost some talented teenagers with some real good skill could come in and do this, right? Because it doesn't feel... Uh, like especially a 3D the 3D animated film to me feels like it's behind a glass wall. You know, like I can look at it. It's like, how do you do it? How do you get in there? Right? It's so damn polished. This stuff has a different uh, entry point. I, I would agree with it, and not to say that that's bad. I think it's actually good, and I, I think I think anime is excellent at getting, uh, especially younger um, artists as well, interested in art. You know, in art. When I had my school in uh, in the Pasadena area. Um, man, I would say half my students came in because of anime. You know, they'd always come in because anime inspired them, just like the cartoons of my time inspired me to want to go into art. You know, uh, you should uh, you should have chosen one Punch Man. Oh, there, yeah, yeah, that's true. Punch Man's a good one. Funny enough, Dragon Ball, the classic to the new versions, has a lot of impact. Like you feel the punches. Yeah, yeah, we were looking at that as well. Um, if you haven't seen Love, Death, and Robots. I have seen Love, Death, and Robots. Amazing. Robert Valley is one of my favorite artists, and he's done a piece for both of those. Uh, he did the one in this past one with the whales and the um, the they're like the polar ice cap or something, right? So that was Robert Valley's. I love it. Um, I think it's based on energy conservation that the bends don't become a normal thing in the action scenes. They incorporate the stiffness and every. Yeah, it's interesting. Maybe it is energy conservation. I don't know. Uh, the Fate Stay Night haven't hasn't feel the movie's extremely fluid animation any suggestion for practicing force i'm not good at remembering things um the main practice at least we always start with on the website is uh even just the skating and drawing uh with the roller coaster you know it's understanding the experience of line and curves and how they relate to one another you know i've never done this as an assignment but here we are in sync sketch, sketch and like i said today try and download um, a clip that you really like, that you think has a lot of force, go in there and try to use directional applied force and sketch over it and start to see the abstractions of energy behind movement, right? Instead of getting enraptured only with watching a finished product, right? You guys wanna learn how to abstract and study and break things down. And what better way than to use Sync Sketch, go in here, break the stuff down. And then when you do that, try to bring that over to your drawing, right? Um, yeah, like yeah. you mentioned, it, you know, so that's why, you know, maybe our lines feel very like kind of free, you know, when you're like sketching things out because those are the abstraction, like people understand like, okay, you know, I don't want to be that rough, but those are the abstractions that truly are understanding the figure drawing. And right. uh, because actually the, even the figure drawing is coming from emotion. So, this is one of the things that it, it's kind of like connecting to the leading edge video that we did uh, that we have to like see the past and the, and the future of this pose. Even we are drawing from a, like a reference. So we're not looking at it as like a still photograph because it's a live human. So <laughs> he must be like getting into that pose like through some kind of animation. Uh, I mean, I mean motion. So we are like taking that as a frame, like freeze in between and then drawing it. So maybe like doing these yeah. abstractions, uh, like on even on the figure drawing, you know, that would really help to see the like the overall motion of it. So yeah, I think, no, that's 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 correct. Yep. Yeah, I think it gives you a lot of like freedom to your drawing, and uh, it helps you understand basically the the life of the figure. You know? Yeah, you know. Um, for someone that doesn't understand what we're teaching and they may see a post of ours on Instagram or on YouTube or even in the books for that matter. Um, the, the, one of the comments I've gotten over the last, let's say 25 years is why do you do these incomplete drawings? <laughs> right? Like why aren't they finished? It's because of what I showed you today, you know, and what Mertunje just said, which is we're drawing these abstractions. So if you come to drawingforce.com, what we're doing is we start, with those abstractions and from those abstractions we build up from there right the abstractions are the foundations to everything else and you're trying to abstractly understand the body as a capsule 
for these forces. And these forces are what make the body move. It's like the energy in the body relative to the energy of gravity pulling down at the same time. And you're combining these two ideas. And then you're saying anatomy is affected by this power. It's like the fuel of the body, right? And then we're trying to show you how that fuel moves around, right? So that's why you'll see a lot of our students work where there's not full figures because they're understanding the fuel, these uh, directional and applied forces and how they create rhythms to create balance in the body. And then, then we show you how form um, is affected by that fuel, right? How it's pushing it around, how those energies are pushing it. And then comes in shape design and so on and so on. I think the main thing I wanna close with today is this is my history, guys. I came from Disney animation that very strongly affected my drawing approach. And what I have taught students for decades now is to understand that human beings are built to move. We're alive and we're moving around. So even the stiffest of poses of somebody just standing still has force in it because your anatomy is designed to do so. And it's designed like that based on gravity. And as soon as any kind of movement is done, boom, things are kicking into higher gear, you know? So again, I close with, I would recommend doing this. You know, I suggest try using Sync Sketch, bring in some video clips, draw on top of it. You know, it, mem it memorizes it from frame by, you know, frame to frame. And uh, yeah, and have fun doing it. And then try to bring that information over to your figure drawing and understand we are drawing those abstractions. So in the weeks to come, we're gonna start talking about other occupations. Uh, so stick around, you know, we'll see you next week with uh, another occupation and how force actually does work in uh, that location, in that job, All right? Thank you, Mutunjay and Swenley. Thank you everyone for coming today to this uh, live Force Friday. Uh, we will see you guys in a week. Take care, everyone.